As you move forward, you finally get to 1892, and that's the first time that Democrats regain the presidency, Grover Cleveland, the House, and the Senate. They get all of that in 1892. So having regained everything in 1892, now Republicans got it under Abraham Lincoln in 1861, now Democrats get it back. They repealed every civil rights law. They repealed the Klan laws, the force laws, they repealed the anti segregation they repealed everything. So it's gone, and at that point is where you have the real introduction of the black codes. So since all the federal laws are off the books, now you have the southern states that start saying, we'll do a poll tax, we'll do property taxes, we'll do the grandfather closet. They go through 11 different legal ways to keep blacks from voting in the South. They had literacy tests, Alabama had literacy tests, and you think, well, what's wrong with making sure people can read before they vote? I mean, you gotta read the ballot. No, 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 these literacy tests in Alabama were over 20 pages long and they weren't whether you could read or not. The, the literacy tests were things like, what rights do you have if you're indicted by a grand jury that's different from being indicted by a regular jury? Who knows the answer to that? But that's what they gave the African Americans, and they gave them such tedious tests that, of course, all blacks turned out to be illiterate. They couldn't vote. They also had what they called hide-and-seek polling places. They had Democrats vote over here, they had Republicans vote over here. Well they would take the Republican ballots and move them around to different places throughout the day so that you couldn't find where the ballot was. So that was part of what went on. As a matter of fact, lest people think that we're really just kind of picking on stuff here, this is part of the presidential election of 1928. It starts up top, it says, what happened when the Republican Party was in power in Alabama? This is a picture of the 1872 Alabama legislature filled with whites and blacks. They go on and say now, if you believe in white supremacy, vote the straight Democrat ticket November the 6th. This is not a pejorative, that's a statement of fact. It was not until 1944 the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the Democrat policy that said blacks cannot be elected to office as Democrat. And I heard you correctly, you said 1944, 19, not 1944. 1944. Now, the first Southern Democrat elected to Congress was in 1972, and that was Barbara Jordan. Uh, and that was Andrew Young. Now, how did they get elected out of the South as a Democrat in 1972? Because the Supreme Court had just issued a ruling that told the Democrat legislature of Georgia and the Democrat legislature of Texas to redraw lines so that a black could be elected. They gerrymandered lines to keep blacks from being elected. Had it not been for the Supreme Court getting involved in telling the two Democrat legislatures to redraw lines, those two blacks would not have been elected. So the, the whole black history aspect, it's a very partisan thing, but we hear nothing about it, but it is so well documented. 